Today we're talking about seed starting and getting some seeds started here for the Horticulture Geek Garden. Come and join me. Hey guys and welcome back to Horticulture Geek. I'm Ray and thank you so much for joining me today here on the channel. And you heard me correct, today we are going to talk about seed starting and we're going to get some seeds started here for my gardens here at Horticulture Geek. Now some of you may be thinking, it is way too late to be starting seeds, but it is not too late. If you are a small urban gardener like me in a residential neighborhood, you probably don't have space for a greenhouse, you have limited space in your home, uh, we don't have lots of space to start seeds super early. Now, when you hear other gardeners and YouTube channels talking about, you know, I'm starting my seeds eight weeks out, six weeks out, this, that, th that is perfectly acceptable. And it is very good garden practice if you have the space to deal with those seedlings. For me here in my home, I don't necessarily have the space to deal with seedlings. So I need to start my seedlings and move them directly from my seed starting trays outside to where they need to go. I don't have space to pot things up to larger containers starting, you know, so all that stuff I don't have space to do. And that is a very common problem for a lot of suburban or urban gardeners. So if you are in the same boat as me, let this be your sign or your message that you don't have to start seeds super early. Now it is April the 2nd here in central Arkansas. Um, and so my last average frost date is somewhere around April 15th, April 20th, usually. Um, I tend to like to shoot for May 1st to get things outside into the ground. So that gives me four weeks right now to start some seeds and get things ready to go. And so today that's exactly what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna walk you through what I have ordered this year to start, and I'm gonna walk you through the process. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today um, is what are we going to grow here in the Horticulture Geek Gardens? So here we go. Okay, so we are here inside my home and, and I'm going to walk you through what we are doing this year. Now, I went out and I purchased just off of a shelf at a box store some colia seeds. So let me show those up to you. These are just burpee, multicolored colia seeds. Now, I am a huge fan of colias. Um, they just tuck into the garden and they bulk up and provide you so much texture, color, and interest, especially in your shadier areas. So I grow a lot of colias here, so that's why I've got two packages of seeds. Then outside of that, I have ordered some things. So I ordered this year from Johnny's Seeds, and we're gonna open these up together here. Ta -da. So let's go through what I ordered from Johnny's. Now, if you are new to seed starting, there are different types of uh, seed companies out there. There are companies like Burpee who love to do beautiful photographs over there on their seed packets and they give you some basic minimal planting instructions on the backside. Um, then you have companies like rareseeds.com who again like to do beautiful photographs on the front of their seed packet, but they're gonna give you some more expanded information on the back. And then you have companies like Johnny's. Now, Johnny's does not worry about photographs or artwork or any of that stuff. They're just gonna tell you what you need to know, and they are going to give you more detailed instructions on the back. 
So if you are new to seed starting, or if you are looking for a particular plant that you've never grown before, and you really want some good thorough instructions, see if Johnny's has that seed, um, because their planting packages instructions tend to be a little bit more in depth and better, especially for those of you who like to read instructions before you tackle a project. So now that I've said that, but as you can tell, I order from everybody. So I'm not promoting one company over the other. They're all good. It's just a matter of preference on what you want. So now then let's jump into what I am growing this year. So this is Cosmos and this is a Sensation Mix Cosmos. Um, this is a Double Click Mix Cosmos. Then I picked up some Sunwrench Lemon Sunflower. Um, so this is a bright lemony yellow sunflower. Um, and again, sorry these don't have pretty pictures, but I think you can kind of get the point of what I am working through. Now, sunflowers and cosmos, I'm not going to pre-start today. These can be direct sowed outside once temperatures are appropriate. So I won't worry about pre-starting these today, but this is what I ordered, so I wanted to share that with you. Next up, we have uh, Mexican Sunflower or Tithonia. Again, this can be planted right outside, or I can pre-start it if I want to, just like my Cosmos. Um, I can pre-start these things if I want to, but this doesn't have to necessarily be pre-started in the house. It can be planted right outside. Um, and if you have not grown a Mexican Sunflower yet or a Tithonia, um, that is a really interesting, beautiful plant. It uh, has small zinnia sized sunflowers that just cover this whole huge plant. It's, it's really nice. All right, the next thing up is my hyacinth bean. This is Ruby Moon hyacinth bean. If you've been with my channel for a while, you know that I love to plant hyacinth bean on my swing arbor in the garden. We're gonna do that again this year and we're gonna start the seeds ourselves. Okay, the next thing I picked out is a pink Sunday salvia. So I've got that to start. Then I picked up some double Zahara Brilliant Dwarf Zinnias. Again, zinnias I can plant directly outside. There's no need to pre-start them. I just really like zinnias and cosmos, so I picked up some more of these. I have Oklahoma Formula Zinnia. Then I picked up a Lacy Lavender Blue didas, Didiscus. Didiscus. I'll show that one up close. So it looked interesting on the website. So I grabbed that just to see what happens. And then the last thing that I picked up this year are Scarlet Runner Beans. Scarlet Runner Beans are very similar to Hyacinth Beans. Um, the Ruby Moon Hyacinth Beans, except for they have a beautiful scarlety orangey color. Um, and so I'm going to try a mix this year. I'm going to do the Ruby Moon and the Scarlet Runner on the Swing Arbor to hopefully give lots of color and interest out there on that arbor this year. So that is it, guys. That's what I've ordered this year. That's what I'm going to be starting. Um, so now let's jump into how we're going to start these seeds. All right, so here are the supplies that we are going to need. Um, I'm using my sled. This is what I use as a potting tray. We'll talk about that in a second. I've got a large mixing bowl. 
I've got seed starting mix. Now it doesn't matter what kind of seed starting mix you use. I'm showing you two different kinds here. One that I ordered from Gardener Supply and one that I just picked up at Lowe's. Seed starting mix is either is what you want. So just make sure that it says seed starting mix. That is what you're looking for. Any other types of soils can possibly get too thick and too clunky to possibly to allow your seeds to germinate. So you wanna make sure you've got a seed starting mix for maximum success. We're gonna need some water. And then I have my Grow Ease Seed Starter Trays. Um, this is what I love to start seeds in and we're gonna walk you through that as well. But I wanted you to see one with the label on it. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the seed starting trays that I like to use. So these are from Gardener's Supply and they're called the Grow Ease Seed Starting Kits. These are self watering trays. Um, and here's what you get when you order that. You get a seed cell tray, okay? These are rigid, hard plastic. These are reusable and dishwasher safe. I ran this one through my dishwasher last week in preparation for today's video and getting these seeds started. So this seed starting cell tray is clean and sterile. I ran it through my dishwasher on high heat, steam dry. There are no organisms or bacteria left on this tray. It is perfectly safe and clean, just like you would sterilize and clean like a mason jar to can food items. You wanna make sure that you're using clean and sterile seed starting trays so that you don't unintentionally give your seedlings bacteria, diseases, viruses, or problems. So this is clean and ready to go. I love using this for that reason. It is uh, no waste. Reuse it, clean it up, store it away, pull it back out year after year. Good product for that. It obviously comes with a humidity dome. Then it comes with the solid bottom tray that our seed kit will fit right into. And so this is what the setup I'm gonna be using today to actually start seeds. And so it fits on just like that. And now I have a seed starting tray that I can put water and moisture in, build humidity in, and get my seeds to germinate. Now here's the beauty of this system from Gardener Supply. Once I get germination and I'm ready to take my humidity dome off, I then pull my seed starting tray out of my solid bottom tray. I place in a riser stand, just like that. And then I put on a self wicking mat. Okay, so I grab my self wicking mat and this is a reusable mat as well. I laundered this, I washed this by hand. I did not put this through my washing machine uh, just because I, I didn't want to take the risk of it. But I did wash this by hand um, in hot soapy water, um, just like I would any other delicate fabric material. And so this is also clean and sterilized and I can reuse it from year to year. These are sold separately on Gardener Supplies website. So if yours gets too gross, damaged, beyond repair, you're just not comfortable washing it, you wanna buy new, you can buy just these mats. So here's the beauty of this system. I've got my solid bottom tray that will hold water. I've put my riser stand in there. Now then I take my self wicking mat and I put it in there. Now look at here, you see that it sticks over too far. That's because I'm going to take it and tuck it down into the tray. And then I'm going to fill this tray with water. This wicking mat, just like a wicking shirt material or an uh, athletic uh, material that you would wear on your body, a wicking material, it's going to get that water that it's setting in on this side and it's going to pull that water all the way across this wicking mat using the power of water osmosis, right? So we're going to get that, this mat is going to become saturated. My seed starting cells have drainage holes in the bottom. So I'm gonna set that here. 
So remember though, I've already germinated my seeds. I've removed the humidity dome. So I already at this point would have roots established in my seed starting cells. The soil and roots in these cells are going to then draw that moisture from the wicking mat up as they need it to keep themselves watered. So for a small suburban or urban gardener like me, I have a full-time job, I have other responsibilities, my kids have sporting events and things like that. Um, it may be a struggle for me to properly check moisture levels on my seedlings two, three, four times a day. This product allows me to ensure that my seedlings are keeping constant moisture levels. Now, caveat to that, you still need to keep check of your seedlings because depending on the seedling and the plant type, it is possible that this would provide too much water and we don't want to cause root rot, damping off, or fungal growth in our seedling trays. So, this may be a scenario where depending on where you have this place in your home, how much airflow, how warm it is, how quickly the water is absorbing. You may need to keep water in here at all times and your seedlings are gonna be happy. Or it may be that you have a naturally humid home. Maybe they're not drying out as fast. We might not want to put water in here. We may need to take this off and let it dry out a little bit before we put it back in. So I do want to put that caveat out there that even though this system is a huge help for those of us who, who can't maybe constantly keep check on our seedlings like we should, you still have to keep check of them to make sure that you're not over loving them and taking them the wrong direction, right? So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So this is our system. So now then, what else do I have? So, like I said a minute ago, I have this sled here. And you're probably thinking, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, Ray, what in the world are you using that sled for? I'm using this sled as my potting tray. If you get online at Gardener Supply, Amazon, Walmart, wherever, you can find potting trays that are absolutely produced for this job. And they tend to be a little expensive and they tend to be small. Some of them won't even fit a standard seed starting cell tray, and that annoys me. So, several years ago, I just picked up a sled, and I believe I got the sled from Lowe's or Walmart One, I can't remember, some big box store. It was at the end of winter. I didn't even pay full price for it. It's heavy duty plastic because it's got to stand up to kids and adults sliding down snow hills, right? But look at what it has. It has this rounded spout. It's got deep sides. And it holds anything I wanna put in it. So I can put this in here, make as much mess within my sled as I want to make, get all the dirt in here, get my stuff situated, and then when I'm done, any excess soil that I have left in here, I can simply pour right back into the bag to use at a later time. I love my sled for this type of project. Um, and not just seed starting. I use this all year long. If I'm um, up potting a plant, like it's in too small a container and I'm moving it to a bigger container, I buy something at the uh, garden center and I want to put it into a pretty pot, I do, I do all that in this because it allows me to not have to be so uh, fussy and particular and try to keep things neat and tidy. I can make as big a mess as I want in my sled and then clean the mess up, save the soil for later, and then this goes right back into my potting shed for storage. So there's my handy tip of the day. Get yourself a sled. All right. So I think we're finally ready to get our hands in the dirt. Well, here we go. So when I am starting a seed starting soil mix, I could mix my seed starting soil right into my potting tray. 
and, and that would be perfectly fine. But we do have to pre-moisten a seed starting mix. I like to just go ahead and grab another large bowl to do that in. I personally just find that it's easier to be able to manipulate that dirt and then pour it into my trays. But if you don't have a large pot and you spring for a, a tray, a potting tray of any kind, you absolutely just mix it into the potting tray yourself. You don't need another uh, mixing vessel. I'm just being extra today. So, cause that's what I like. I like to do it this way. It just works for me. So that's the, you know, the trick to gardening is do what works for you. All right, let's get this out of here. So I am using the seed starting mix that I ordered from Gardener Supply. Um, and this mix actually came with my seed starting um, trays. When you order um, the seed starting kit from Gardener Supply, it comes with two of the Grow E seed starting trays and a bag of the mix and uh, plant label stakes. So there you go. So here we go. We're just gonna pour this right into our bucket. And so you can see this here. It is just a very light, loose soil. That is exactly what we're looking for with seed starting. We cannot use thick, chunky uh, soil. Um, a lot of soil, soil mixes for container plants have large bark nuggets in them to provide drainage. We don't want that here. Um, we don't want garden soil or native soil that's thick or filled with clay or anything like that. We need soil that's light and fluffy, that's going to accept water, hold water while also letting excess water flow out, okay? Seed starting can be eh, a little, seed starting soil can be a little complicated, but it's really not with you once you figure it out. So the key really is, unless you are an experienced gardener in a, another type of soil that you're just really comfortable with, and you're gonna have the patience to eagle eye on that soil to make sure your seedlings are, are happy, I really wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend you just spring for the seed starting soil mix. Make your life easy. All right, so we need to pre-moisten this soil. So let's get some water in here. We are looking for nice, evenly moist soil that is not soppy, ringy, wet. We want it to hold a little bit of a shape without uh, being able to wring out like a wet rag or towel. Okay. Oh, and I think we've got it just right. I eyeballed that pretty good. So, if I remember a minute ago, it was just loose, loose fluff, and now you can see the clunks falling down. And if I give that a good squeeze, there's no water coming out, but it holds a shape, okay? That's exactly what we're looking for. And if you are um, worried about overwatering your seedlings, then you know just make sure, just keep yours a little bit on the drier side because we are going to mist and water these seedlings in at the end anyway. The trick here is to make sure that your soil is pre-moistened because big word of the day here, soil has a tendency to be hydrophobic, which means. Once it gets super, super dry, and you may have experienced this before, once soil gets super, super dry, it doesn't really want to accept moisture. The mo If you put moisture on it, it'll just simply run right off, okay? We need to avoid that. And so you don't wanna put a super dry soil into your seed starting, and then when you try to water it, the, soil, the, the water just goes away. So we're preventing that right here. So you're just looking for, yes, Look, I'm squeezing it. It's not doing any dripping or wringing out like a wet rag, but it's holding its shape into a clump. It's perfect. All right, so now then, let's take our seed starting kit and let's just fill this sucker up. And you can see already the benefit of my sled 
I'm able to just dump this in here and if it falls off the sides, that's fine because it is still contained in my seed starting area here in my tray. I'm not making a big mess all over my house or potting shed or garage or wherever you're gonna start your seeds at. Okay, so here you go. So I have a nice, full, even layer, right? Now I'm gonna lightly tamp them down. And I do that, let me get closer, okay? I'm just literally lightly bringing my fingers across that and you see it's creating minor compaction. But what that's doing is if there are any air pockets or air bubbles in there, it's helping to push those out and it's helping the soil to truly fill this cell tray. What I'm not doing is mashing this soil down here. I'm not trying to make a brick. I'm simply trying to ensure that each cell tray is maximally filled without any air pockets down hidden in that soil that would cause problems for our seedlings. Now then I can top that right back off. And there we have it, folks. So now I'm ready to plant some seeds. Let's go with our Scarlet Runner Bean. So on the back of our package here, if I look, it says that, it says plant seeds approximately one inch deep, one inch deep. So let me pour them out in this hand, it's clean, you can see better. So these are just traditional looking bean seeds right there. Okay, I am gonna do a few of these. And so all I'm going to do, so I'm just gonna kinda wiggle in a hole, drop my bean. Wiggle in a hole, drop my bean. Wiggle in a hole, drop my bean. All right. All right, then I'm just going to cover those up. Take my tag and label. All right, let's do the Ruby Moon bean next. So here comes Ruby Moon, hyacinth bean. Let's look at these. Let me open this package up. All right, and it says uh, one half inch deep. So these don't want to be planted as deep as the Scarlet Runner beans. And looky there, these look a little different too. They're not quite as big. So, let's, but we're gonna do the same thing. We're just not gonna make our hole as big. We're just gonna do a slight little hole there. Um, seed packages are going to tell you to put two per cell. I don't necessarily find that um, necessary on fresh purchased seeds. When you are purchasing fresh seeds, um, they should be um, relatively young seeds and they should have a higher germination rate as if you were planting older seeds. Now, if you have older seeds that you've been holding on to for a while, definitely plant two or three of those per cell to ensure that hopefully one of them will germinate and sprout up for you. All right, here goes Ruby Moon. And then there are some seeds, like if you buy a seed that has been um, coated to make it bigger and easier to use, um, that coating on those seeds um, drastically negates the um, germination on that seed after one year. And then there are things like corn, which the germination rate goes down on drastically after a year. So if you have any seeds in your seed stash 
that have been coated um, to make them bigger because the seeds are so small. Um, you really want to use those within one year or you can pretty much just get rid of them. You can give it a shot, but your germination rate is probably not going to be very good. Um, the other thing, like I said, corn, there are a few other things. Corn, you can probably get some of the corn to germinate after a year, um, but it doesn't really like it. it. It wants to be planted fresh. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind. And if you're having poor germination with the use of older seeds, that's what's going on. So it may not be that you're doing anything wrong. You may just be using older seeds. All right. So I've got over half of my tray filled and I've still got uh, eight spots left. So let's go in with some coleus in the next one. Um, and these want to be planted. It just says shallowly. So again, what I talked about earlier, just basic information on here, whereas Johnny specifically said one inch deep, half inch deep. This just says plant shallowly. So I'm just gonna make a small little well right there. Now these seeds are gonna be small, so I probably will wind up going ahead and putting multiple seeds per cell, at least two. Um, and because it's not gonna hurt anything with a coleus, these things grow fast. If I want to thin them later, I can. If I want to divide them later, I can. Or I may just plant them as they grow. Um, it's a summer annual, so it's not gonna matter that much anyway. All right, let me get this open here. Oh yeah, this is really small. There's probably 30 or 40 seeds in my hand right now. So this is a type of seed that sometimes you can find coated to give it more of a size that's easy to handle and use. So be very careful, like I said. Now then, I am going to, they're, they're, when the seeds are this small, there's no way to really count how many are going in each cell. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a few in, in each cell. And we're gonna just, there you go, hope for the best. I'm, 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 not, I'm not burying these deep. Like I, like I said, these just wanna be lightly shallowly planted. So I didn't really even bury them. I just kind of smoothed the soil around them. And let me get my label in there. All right. So there is seed starting. So now all that's left to do is to mist these in to ensure that the seeds have good moisture to get going. Put them in my tray without the wicking mat and put a humidity dome on them and get them under my grow lights. All right, so welcome to my dining room. Again, the joys of urban or suburban gardening. You grow where you have space. So we have this sideboard in our dining room that has this wine rack thing on the bottom, which we don't use. So this turns into my seed starting shelf during seed starting season. I hang my grow light right off of this wine rack piece and then I have this metal shelf here that my seed trays start on. Again, do what you have, do what the budget allows. If you wanna go out and purchase a fancy seed starting shelf, absolutely do that if it's within your budget. Or if you need to just kinda make something fit within your home, it doesn't matter. Gardening is all about accomplishing goals however you can make them work for your budget, your time to make you happy. That's all we're doing here. So I've got my seeds right here. This is a empty tray. That's what I'm gonna be plotting up next. And then here is today's tray. So right here, and I've got a spray bottle. So we're just going to give these a good mist. All right. Set it under the grow light and get our humidity dome on. And 
we're ready for some seeds to germinate. Now, you will notice I do not have a heat mat here. And that's because I am starting these seeds in my home where we keep the temperature um, anywhere from 65 to 70 usually, which is more than enough ambient heat to help the seedlings germinate. Um, so unless you're growing something that specifically says it needs a heat mat to germinate, I don't typically worry about a heat mat necessarily anymore in my home just because I don't necessarily need it. But that is something to keep in mind if you have a cold home, if you're trying to start seeds outside of your home in a, a, like a garage or storage shed or a greenhouse or something, you absolutely need to check into heat mats. You probably will need them unless you're able to maintain a steady ambient air temperature around your seedlings to create the humidity effect that we're looking for in our domes. So, and we're just gonna keep a constant check on these. Remember, there's no water in my reservoir yet because this is not a self-watering system yet. I'm not there yet. So the water that gets into this dome will get there by me. I'll check it multiple times a day. If, it, if I notice anything drying out, I'll give it a spritz. But other than that, it should start taking care of itself. So that's it, guys. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for me today here on the Horticulture Geek channel. Now, remember, there are many gardening channels and YouTubers out there who are gonna show you how to start seeds. So find something that you think is gonna work for you and your circumstances and situation. I'm not saying that the way I do this is the best way by any means. Um, I'm just showing you how I do it and I tend to have pretty good success with my seedlings. So I encourage you to get out there and find um, whatever resources you need, purchase some fun stuff, go get yourself some good seeds, and start growing some stuff. Especially because if you're a gardener like me, you want to fill your garden with lots of beautiful things. Well, it's very expensive to go buy those beautiful things at the store, one plant at a time. But if we can grow them for $1.69 for this package of seeds, which probably has 100 seeds in it, even if I only were to get a 50% germination rate out of this seed package, that's still around 50 coleus plants that I could potentially get out of this $1.69 package. If I go to a garden center and buy a coleus already grown in a single container, that coleus is gonna run me probably $3.99, maybe even more depending on where I'm at. So you can see why seed starting is such a wonderful tool for us gardeners. It allows us to get lots of fun plants to fill our spaces as cheaply as we can get it done. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it has inspired you. You're not too late to start your seeds. Get out there and do it and get your gardens ready because the last frost dates are coming. No matter where you're at, last frost dates are coming and we're gonna be ready to get out there in the garden and get things growing. Hope that you have really enjoyed this video. Give me that thumbs up if you have. Leave any questions or comments down below. And until next time, from my garden to yours, I wish you all the best and happy gardening.